On today's Locked On Thunder, we're going to talk about day three of training camp. What did we learn? The NBA makes a ton of rule changes. I asked Mark about them. Also, what happens on Josh Giddy's TikTok? Darius Baisley is in line for a very big breakout season. And what should fans expect this year as we get started and head towards preseason? All of that and more on the Locked On Thunder podcast, on Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. It's at R-Y-L-A-N underscore S-T-I-L-E-S. You can follow the show on Twitter at L-O Thunder Pod. Email the show, L-O Thunder Pod at gmail.com. Call into the show, 405-362-7128. On today's show, brought to you by Locked On NBA Podcast. We're going to dive into Josh Giddy's TikToks, Darius Baisley's potential breakout season, Shea drops some shoes, expectation for the season, we're going to have, of course, our practice report from day number three and so much more. Make Locked on Thunder your first listen every single morning. We appreciate those of you that do. It's here for you every single day, getting you caught up on what you miss on Thunder basketball. I'm Rylan Stiles, and we're going to dive in right now to the practice report for day number three. So what we learned after practice, Darius Baisley spoke to those of us in the media, and he says he's taking on a leadership role in that's to be expected, even though it's only his, his, his third year. He's like one of the longest tenure players on this roster. He's been here longer uh, than almost anyone else on the roster. And so it's time for him to show these Thunder players what being a member of the Thunder is all about. And so it's fun to see these guys kind of mature in that way. And it's also good to see Baisley so uh, accepting and so wanting to do uh, that leadership role. He also says that yesterday there was a high-energy practice and that they're installing some new stuff. And I'm I'm interested in the new stuff. Every year, you're going to install some new offensive sets, some new plays on offense, some maybe some zone coverage defensively. The Thunder roster, though, is so versatile, and, and there's so many ways they can go about installing new stuff. Are they going to have s- zones because you have so many long, lengthy players on your roster on defense? Are they going to have uh, offensive plays where Shea's playing uh, primarily off ball? And that opens up his game a lot, as we saw with Chris Paul. And, and it opens up Josh Giddy as well, who's been raved about by everybody about his passing, as we've known since the pre-draft process. But that's translated so far into NBA training camp. Everybody who talks about Josh Giddy talks about his passing. What are those new wrinkles that we're going to get from Mark, who, who had a phenomenal year last year? He drew up some great plays, some great out of timeout plays, some great side out plays. What's that next step for his offense and for his implementation of his game plan? Because you know, last year Mark gets hired late November. And training camp starts December 4th, and preseason starts like December, what, was it like 10th or 11th? And then you have the games on Christmas, like four preseason games, and then you have your games on Christmas, and, and then you go. And the season started, and the season's underway, and, and there's just, there's no time really for these players to get adjusted to the new system, to the NBA lifestyle, but also no time for Mark to, to kind of hone in on every little thing he wants to add. So while most of this, that, that will be, Implemented will be stuff that returners already know. There is stuff that's new for everybody. Because it's impossible to get everything that Mark wants to get in there done in just one off season and in one shortened off season. So I'm fascinated by that myself. Again, the high energy stuff is great. Isaiah Roby also talked, and, and what stood out to me the most about Isaiah Roby was like Josh Giddy yesterday, he praises Jeremiah Robinson Earl's three-point shooting. And, and to me, that will be the difference in his in his career. I think right now, if you gave me you know, you know, gun to the head situation where I've got to predict will JRE be a five, six, seven, eight, nine, even ten year player, I'd say yes. I think he's that good, and he has that much uh, of a basketball understanding, and he has that much ability, just raw natural ability to do the right thing. High IQ player, very scrappy, very hustly, hustly player. Who you're going to want on the end of your bench, um, but. If he can knock down threes, and that elevates him even more to like he can be a very valuable sixth man and not just somebody that you want to have on your roster 
for the regular season. He could be somebody who is in playoff rotations, especially with the way that the NBA is evolving at that center position. So he you know, went back and forth with that Villanova. There were some stretches in Villanova where he was great shooting the three ball and also some stretches where he wasn't so good. Uh, but to have it early on translate to the NBA at a high level, it's good for his game because I already think he's going to be an NBA player. I think that they got late first round value on JRE in the second round, early second round. But taking that step and being a consistent three-point shooter, it opens up his game so much more. And that's why Richard Stamen at Mavs Draft, who we talked to all last year for the draft, we'll talk to all this year for the draft. Uh, he had JRE in his top 10. I mean, I mean, he had JRE that high in his rankings, and it's predicated on him being a good three-point shooter. So if he can do that, he'll fit right in Oklahoma City with what they're trying to build with this kind of versatile group that everybody can can rebound, can play make, can ball handle, and can run the floor. And JRE can do all those things and more. And so the pick and pops with Shea and JRE, if he's knocking down threes consistently, that's going to be a ton of fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Isaiah Roby also credits Ty Jerome for being a quarterback of the defense. And, and you know, I, th I feel like that's an area of Ty Jerome's game that kind of gets underrated a bit is his defense. And you saw last year he would get guys in the right position and things like that. And that Isaiah Roby wants to take on that role himself. And he wants to improve in that area himself. And Mark says he has. Mark says that Roby looks more comfortable. Roby's calling out coverages. Uh, the game has slowed down for Roby. So if you're paying attention, if you're keeping uh, you know, tabs at home, that's Pokashevsky and Roby, who the game was slowed down for so far, uh, from Mark Degnan. So Mark also talked a lot about JRE and his perimeter in instincts, and he talks about his three-point shooting in a different way where JRE can shoot on the move and can shoot while relocating on the perimeter. And, and that's a great trait to have for a versatile stretch five. And, and I just cannot wait to see what JRE's game is going to be. Mark also talked about the rule changes. And so if you didn't see, the NBA changes some rules yesterday, makes it official yesterday. We kind of heard about them going forward. Uh, one of the rules uh, was asked, I believe, by Joe Mazzato about uh, the shooting. Offensively, you know, Luka Doncic, James Harden, Trey Young, where they pump fake and get you in the air. Your defender goes straight up as a totally legal defensive position, and then they just kind of lean into you uh, and, and kind of generate contact. Um, that now should be an offensive foul. And it should take that out of the game and make the game more watchable because you're not having those you know situations where you're slowing down, you're slowing down for free throws and you're slowing down for, you know, just unnecessary arguments, things like that. So like it should take that out of the game, which is great. Uh, Mark says that the NBA, of course, sends these teams um, you know, videos and, and packages of like, hey, this is an example of what's not going to happen anymore. This is an example of what can happen you know, moving forward. And Mark says that there was in that short little you know, teaching video from the league and from the officials, there were two clips in there about Lou Dort, uh, who was on the wrong side of the whistle on, on those plays, where this year it would be offensive fouls and it would not hurt the Thunder or Lou Dort. And this rule change will benefit Lou Dort greatly. And, and Mark seemed a bit skeptical if they'd actually change the rules and actually follow through with this. But if they do, right, if they do end up calling this, you know, consistently and routinely, it helps the Thunder greatly because they have a guy in Lou Dort who is a very aggressive defender, uh, who is going to challenge you, who's going to get up on you and going to press you and, and going to stay with, you know, right with you. You know, some of these defenders kind of sit back a little bit and wait until you're truly going to shoot to commit because they're so long and lengthy that they can make up for that. They can make up for that kind of space that they let you create. With Lou Dort, he's right in front of your face 24-7. And, and so he's aggressive and, and that can lead to more fouls, especially if you're able to pump fake and then lean into somebody and get a foul that way. So taking that element out of the game, really helps Lou Dort, and, and it helps this whole Thunder roster because Baisley is trying to be a better defender too, and that helps him a lot as well. So it makes the game more watchable. It makes the game more fun, and we're not sitting there and having those fouls drawn 28 times a game and slowing the game down to a, just a snail's crawl. So we'll see if it actually gets called, if it routinely gets called and consistently gets called, and we'll see how players address because I'm not somebody who believes that Luka Doncic or, or James Harden or Trey Young – are not going to be good players anymore. They're still going to be really good players. They're going to find something else. They're going to find a new slant to, to go to and to you know, exploit or however you want to phrase it. You know, did they exploit this rule, whatever? Um, they're going to find something else. What is that something else for those three guys specifically who like, kind of do this the most? Uh, I think they're going to be a very good player. And so how do they adjust? How long does it take to adjust? Are they still going to be trying this stuff, you know, on opening night through December, through January, through November? Like when's the cutoff of where, okay, we're no longer testing this out by the officials. They're actually going to call it. We're going to move on. I, I find that interesting for this season moving forward for the Thunder. They also changed a rule in the NBA where, you know, in the, in the final two minutes, referees could initiate the review for a ball out of bounds. And now 
It'll no longer be referees. You have to challenge it. You have to use your one coach's challenge. And they did not change the challenge rule. So even if you win a coach's challenge, unlike the NFL, you do not get it back. You, If you use it, you lose it no matter what the outcome is. And you only get one per game. And so I asked Mark, does this change how you're going to utilize the coach's challenge? Because now you get in a late game scenario. If you've used it at the two-minute mark like you did one time last year, you, you, you cannot challenge a clearly wrong and clearly out-of-bounds call. And, and Mark's a coach, and the Thunder have an advantage of this, who coached in the G League for so long, and they, his whole career he's had the coaching challenge. Like his entire coaching career he has had one in professional basketball. So he is very data-driven. He, he laid out just – he wanted this soliloquy of just like all of these different data points that, that are reasonings why you should use it no matter what, even though conventional wisdom – like when we first heard about this rule – it, you might have thought to yourself, well, of course they're just going to save this challenge. They're just going to save it to the very end because they want to make sure they have you know, this you know, challenge for a possibly terrible out-of-bounds play. Well, Mark had all these data points. He got on a roll, and he wanted to keep talking about it, but, but people kind of moved on from it. And he, he got on a roll about this replay stuff. And it basically boils down to, in layman's terms, look, only half your games are going to be close games. So that's 41 games out of 82. And then of those 41 games that are going to be close, Half of those will probably have a play like this one where it's kind of iffy to the ball go to bounce on who. Uh, and then of those ones that are iffy, five or six or seven are going to be such clear and, de and decisive you know, evidence on the video replay that you actually win. So if you save all your challenges for the end of the game, you're going to go into summer vacation with only six replay wins and like 41 of them left in your pocket, in your backpack at summertime, he said, uh, you know, and you just didn't use them, didn't get to utilize it, didn't get to try to uh, gain an advantage from them. So, so you just can't be afraid to use them. Now, don't use them willy-nilly. Don't use them, you know, dumbly. Like, like, don't challenge something that just shouldn't be challenged. But don't be afraid to challenge it was the way that he put it. You know, they're not going to be scared to use their challenge just because, oh, no, what if at the end of the game we don't have our, our coach's challenge? And Mark says there's only two times in his career so far. And this, this is a long career, even though it's only one NBA season. Uh, you know, he was an NBA assistant coach and then a G League coach that had the challenge as well. There's only two points in his career where, you know, only having one challenge hurt him in a game. The first one was in the bubble. They had to challenge a play against Denver for Shea's fifth foul to get that back. Later on in that game, there was an awful call. He's on Millsap, you know, against the Thunder, where they would have liked to be able to challenge that call at the end of the game, kind of to sway the game uh, in the Thunder's favor. You know, that, that's going to happen. And then he gave another one where, this season, the challenge that I referenced, you know, where, where he uses it with like a minute into the game, he uses his challenge. He says that he kind of just reacted. He, he didn't ask the player. He saw Ludor's initial reaction. He said he saw a bad angle of the replay. He just reacted, tell him to challenge it, went on about his day. He did not even consult Ludor. Hey, did you really, were you really, you know, job there by the ref? He just went ahead and did it. And then it lost him the challenge and they blew it in the first minute. But two times in like a five, six year career with, with replay, you know, that's nothing. And so you, you cannot be afraid to use these challenges. So, so I like Mark's thought out answer. He's been very well-spoken and well thought out uh, his entire time in Oklahoma city. So I've, I've really enjoyed talking with him so far coming up. We're gonna have an injury update from camp. We're going to talk about Darius Baisley's expectations, the expectations for the whole team and so much more. But first I want to say right now, we're good friends over at indeed general managers ask the question uh, to find the right players. Like, do they have ice in your veins? Well, they ask that of players in the NBA. When you're hiring, you can use Indeed assessments to help make sure you find candidates with the skill sets that you need. You might not need ice in your veins, but you might need something else like a quick typer, which in some ways could be ice in your veins if you're clutched that way in typing up papers. When hiring gets hard, you need Indeed. The job site that makes hiring incredibly simple, just attract, interview, and hire. In fact, with Indeed, you can do all of your hiring in one place, even interviewing. Just hope your perfect candidate will find you. Don't just do that because Indeed can help you find that perfect candidate. Indeed, Indeed can give you the tools to cut through the noise faster and smarter and get you that perfect candidate. That way you're not just sitting there and hoping you're going to find that perfect candidate. With Indeed assessment, choose 135 skill tests to help make your applications better for people to kind of show you their skill set that, that you need to you know, evaluate and have for your hiring process. According to Talent Nest, Indeed delivers four times more hires than any other job sites combined. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade job posts at Indeed.com slash locked. 
That's a $75 job credit on Indeed.com slash locked. Indeed.com slash locked. Offer valid through September 30th. Terms and conditions do apply. I want to tell you right now about our good friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar is a fantastic protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Go to BuiltBar.com. Use promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off. Built Bar has amazing flavors like coconut, cherry barcia, uh, cherry raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. My favorite flavor of Built Bar is the cookies and cream Built Bar. And if you don't want to believe me, you don't want to take my advice for it, and that's okay. I understand. Get the mixed box. The mixed box gives you two of each flavor. You can try them all out and then reorder the flavor you love the most. It's simple. It's easy. It's perfect for everyone who wants a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Most bars have 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and four grams of net carbs. They're amazing flavor. They're all tasty. They're all healthy. They're great. Built Bar is the official track uh, protein bar, the track and field team, U.S. track and field team for the Olympics. Try them out today. They're perfect. They're simple. You can use them for a snack, even a meal replacement, before a workout, post-workout, anything you want at BuiltBar.com, promo code LOCK15, 15% off of your next order. So we're back on the Locked On Thunder podcast on Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. Make sure you're making Locked On Thunder your first listen every single morning. We're here for you every single day and now on YouTube. So check that out as well if you'd want. Now, we're going to dive into this injury update and then get into Darius Baisley as well. Because I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by Darius Baisley this season. But the injury report, uh, Derek Favors was back on Wednesday. He had um, Tuesday, he had Wednesday evening's practice because he flew back from that knee injury. Remember that knee treatment, I should say. It was not an injury. We were stressed to that point. It was not an injury. Uh, he flew back into Oklahoma City uh, on Wednesday night, practice Wednesday night, and then practice again on Thursday. So he's good to go so far. I'm sure he'll practice again today. We'll find out in about two hours from now uh, if he does practice. Vit is still out. He's in that ACL recovery. It's just precautionary. He, remember, he practiced in both sessions on Tuesday. He practiced Tuesday morning and Tuesday evening. Um, and then did not practice on Wednesday, did not practice on Thursday morning. We're not sure about Thursday evening. We'll find that out again in a couple of hours. Uh, Trey Mann, who had a sore groin and left practice early on Wednesday, is back on Thursday. I'm sure he'll play again on Friday. So that's your injury update heading into Friday and heading into the weekend. Uh, let's talk about Darius Baisley right now, though, because Darius Baisley is one of the more fascinating players on this Thunder roster. I think that people have kind of soured on him a little bit too, too extremely. He had a bad year last year, had a setback year last year, uh, but most of the time, players' jumps come between year two and year three. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if Poku's jumps the same way, where it comes between year two and year three and not right now between year one and year two. Um, I, I think that last year is a weird season. And we have to remember that these players deal with adversity too in their life, like you do at your job, to where Darius Baisley has been a part of the two weirdest seasons in NBA history. You know, he's coming off of being a New Balance intern into his rookie year. Rookie year starts out smooth, starts out good off the bench. He had some flashes, and then the season ends. And then you come back to this bubble, and he plays great. He's incredible in the bubble. He, he was you know, playing so well, he should have played over Steven Adams. Like he, he was playing great in the bubble. And then you get a shortened off season. You come back, new coach that didn't get hired until, you know, again, late November. And now you're in a totally new role. You're a starter. Teams are game planning for you. You're playing now at a heightened defensive role where you're playing and matching up with in a week, right? In a week span, he played and, and matched up with Kevin Durant, Jimmy Butler, Julius Randle, Zion. Like that was his week last year, early on in the year. I think it was like week three of the season. He had all those guys you know, that he had to defend. And it's a wide range of talent to defend. That's a lot of adjustment period. That's a lot of adjustment to do. And he took it head on, had a step back year. And now it's a more normal off season. He comes back and he seems comfortable. He seems happy. He seems just, there's a different vibe about him. And I think that we have to remember, he's still very young. And what the Thunder are building here, what the Thunder are trying to build is a versatile team where you can switch one through five. Everyone can play, make ball, handle, and facilitate. And you want great rebounders. Base is a great rebounder. I've said all along that the talent that got him drafted was at his size at 6'9", to be able to ball handle and pass the ball the way that he can. That's what get, got him to the NBA. Putting him in better position to do those things this year will go a long way. I, I'm not sure whose fault it was. Was it Mark's fault? Was it Sam Presti's fault? Was it Basie's fault? 
whose fault it was last year where he was kind of relegated to just standing in the corner for a lot of the possessions and a lot of the sets. That's not going to be his game. He's not going to be a spot up corner three point shooter. You got to get him moving. You got to get him aggressive. You got to find that next gear for him and tap into that aggressiveness. And we saw that so far in the summer workouts on Instagram. How much do you want to put salt into that? I understand that, but we've seen it so far. Can he duplicate that to the NBA? If he's aggressive this year, he's going to surprise a lot of people. I think that I think that this is a make or break year for him and not in the sense of his NBA career. I think that next year he'll be in the NBA no matter what happens. In the sense of, is Darius Baisley a solidified, legitimate part of this core? Is he somebody this team is building around? Or is he somebody who, if you need a sweetener, if you got a trade lined up, you can throw him in there. What is the plan for Darius Baisley? That'll get, I think, decided this year. I think that depending on how he plays this year, you're going to find that answer out. Now, let's talk about fan expectations this year. So, we are three days away from the preseason opener. The Lakers and Nets play on Sunday at like 2.30, if you're interested in that. Uh, but, you know, the Thunder play on Monday against the against the Hornets. What should you expect as a fan? Because if you checked out last year, I totally get it. You know, it was a pandemic. You know, we're still in a pandemic, but it was a pandemic. And a lot going on. There's no fans in the stands. I totally get that. You're coming back this year. Fans are in the stands. What should you expect? Look, this team will not win a lot of games. This team will not be a team that lights the world on fire on the scoreboard. Um, they're going to give a young minutes a ton of you know, young guys a ton of minutes, and with that, you're going to lose games because young guys are not going to know how to close out games in the NBA. Um, you should be watching for what these young guys can do and the flashes that they have and, and the improvements that they make. So, like Isaiah Roby. Are the improvements defensively noticeable? Are the improvements for Darius Baisley noticeable? Pokashevsky, that strength to get into the paint, is he, using, is he is he doing that in preseason in training camp, or is he going to do that in actual NBA games? You know, watching for individual development individual, and individual success stories is going to be the most important part of this season because the Thunder pick is lottery protected. They're likely going to fall in the lottery again this year, obviously. And you're just seeing what this team's building. I think that the Thunder have created a perfect rebuild team. Derek Favors, Mike Muscala, Gabriel Deck. It's pretty much it on the entire roster that you can check out on. You can say, ah, I don't really care. I don't care what Mike Muscala does. He can hit five threes in a game. Don't care. He's a great guy. He's a great ambassador for the Thunder. He deserves a spot on this team. But when the Thunder become a championship contender, will be playing here. So eh, you know, great for him to still have an NBA career and still be such a vocal leader. And I will say Mike Muscala specifically is a big part of what they're building here because he's a big part of laying the foundation of the culture. And we know how important culture is, especially in a small market. So I'm only dismissing the basketball player, Mike Muscala, not the intangibles of Mike Muscala, but on the court, whenever you're just watching basketball games this year, it won't matter what Mike Muscala does. There's nothing he can do at 30 years old to be a part of this team once they're winning championships and being a part of this team that plays a ton of minutes. Um, Gabriel Deck, 26. I, I don't think that he's going to be a part of the championship team whenever they get to that point in their rebuild. Um, this seems more like a flyer on a guy who, let's see if he can be an NBA player, prove himself, and then maybe get us a second-round pick in the future. Um, and, and then you, you have Derek Favors, who everyone in the NBA knows what is at this point. Like There's no second year, third year, fourth year for Derek Favors. He's a good player. He's a good locker room guy. And you're just waiting until a team needs him and a team will trade for him. Because right now, every team has talked themselves into their team being great. So you're not going to find a team that's just desperate to get Derek Favors right now. But in a month from now, whenever a team that's supposed to be in the playoffs is off to like a two and six start, that, that could be your end. That, that could be your moment to, to go sell them on, you need Derek Favors for a second round pick and then get a second round pick for him. Like those guys on this entire roster are the only guys who I don't think have a chance to be a part of this team whenever they're a championship team. Now, obviously, you cannot keep all 17 guys. You cannot keep, uh, you know, the entire group. So somebody else besides those three will fall out of favor and will kind of be involved in trades or just won't be here whenever the team gets good again. But as of right now, they all have a chance. They all have, they all have this season to prove themselves. So that makes almost every minute of the season, which will not be on the scoreboard, watchable, important, um, worth keeping up with. So you shouldn't expect a ton of wins, but you should expect development. You should expect seeing somebody break out because I think 
I don't know who yet, but I think somebody's going to break out the way that Shea did last year. Not, not going to be a, a almost 50, 40, 90, 25 point per game score, but will be somebody who changes the way that we view them. I don't know if it'll change the way that the national people view him, but will change the way that locally here, the fan base views said player. Somebody will do that in this organization this year. And I think personally, it'll be Derek Spacely. But that's what we have on that. Now, I do want to tell you about our good friends over at betonline.ag. But online is the best and fastest place to bet on all of your sport action. It's simple. It's easy. I love betonline.ag because it's the number one spot for pro and college football action. With the new updated site and interface, it's a great interface. It's a great site now. Truly, I, I love it. I found the odds uh, so quicker at betonline.ag than any other place. They have odds, prop bets, contests. BetOnline continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head over to the website or even use your mobile device and sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Do not forget code locked on to receive your bonus 50% from football to basketball, baseball, boxing, right up to your favorite casino games. Do not wait to take advantage of these great offers for the 2021 season at betonline.ag. But online is the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. So I actually use betonline.ag to look up the Thunder opening night odds against the Utah Jazz. And the Thunder are 11 and a half point, actually 12 and a half point dogs. Folks, you and I, we have that inside knowledge. We have that inside scoop from in the Thunder. We follow them closely. Mark with a young team is not going to go into Utah on opening night and get beat by 13 points. So I'm putting money right now on the Oklahoma City Thunder to cover a 12 and a half point spread in Utah. You should do that too at betonline.ag. But online is your online sportbook experts. Make sure you go to betonline.ag where the game starts and use code locked on to receive your welcome bonus. I want to tell you right now that we are on YouTube and thank you for making Locked On Thunder your first listen of the day and every single morning. Make your second listen Locked On Bets. Let me tell you why. Because Locked On Bets is hitting over 60%, over 60% of their bets. And like Locked On Thunder, Locked On Bets is also free on all platforms. So if you listen to Locked On Bets, and you take their advice, they're giving you free money. They're giving you free wins. Just as we're giving you free Thunder content on all your platforms. Make sure you subscribe. Make us your first listen every single morning with your cup of coffee. And then go over and listen to Locked On Bets and Locked On Fantasy Basketball and just a plethora of Locked On Network shows. Make sure you go do that as well. Now let's get into the final topic of the day, which is a bit of a more goofy one. Uh, it was it was last week that I was in Josh Giddy's TikTok live stream and I was live tweeting it and I made articles about it and I was just making it into content because at that time we were kind of still waiting on Thunder content. Um, he mentions that he only wants to play for Oklahoma City. You know, this kind of got blown in proportion, you know, and, and I think that people are missing the point of the, the statement and the sentiment. It's not he only wants to play for the state of Oklahoma and only wants to play in Bricktown and which loves Bricktown, which I'm sure he does. I mean, it's a great place, but it's more so, Hey, I want to play for an organization that has such a reputation to develop, to develop skill sets as this, as this 18 year old kid. And Giddy has been very transparent that as a kid, and he's still, as an 18 year old kid, but as like a 15 year old, 14 year old, he didn't know if the NBA was in his, in his future. Like he, he didn't believe he could be an NBA player. He hit this massive flip of the switch at the NBA Academy where it kind of catapulted him into being a top 10 pick in the NBA draft and to be the sixth overall pick. Well, he did not think that this was a possibility for him, especially this early. So he knows he's a very raw player and he's a ton of work, a ton of development. There are you know, few and far between organizations that have a better track record than the Thunder in developing players. It's the Thunder, it's the Raptors, and that's kind of your 1A, 1B for the best developmental staff. I mean, Memphis is really good too, but you know when you throw that, you know, sentiment around. It's really been the Thunder and the Raptors. So getting involved in that specific area of your game development uh, with a great organization is a big deal for your NBA future, for anyone's NBA future, right? And then also you throw in the factor of like, hey, my sister's in Oklahoma. She's up the road in Tulsa at ORU. You know, it creates a more you know, welcoming environment because it's, I'm sure it's scary to, to you know, go and go across the world and play in this new, in this new country and this, random state you've been to and live there now. You're just there and you're, you're missing your family. You're missing everything to have a connection to home and, and specifically a tight connection to home in his sister, three hours down the road or whatever it is, an hour and a half, whatever. I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, you just really can't. And so, um, you know, I think that he's been telling the truth and it's not like he's going to stay here forever. Like he could very well 
you know, become a great player and want to sign somewhere else. It doesn't mean anything like that for the future, but for the right now, I think he's telling the truth of like, he really only wanted to play here because of all those factors. So that quote kind of got thrown out of proportion a little bit uh, for Josh Giddy, but it was a good one from Josh Giddy. He mentions that he loves playing with Kendrick Williams in pickup games. And so that's a lot of fun. Since then, he said that, you know, he loves playing with Jeremiah Robinson Earl as well. And I'm interested in, as we're kind of getting more details about these scrimmages, what is Josh Giddy's rotational minutes going to look like? Because I want him to start. I, I've been transparent about that. Like whenever I built the rotation the first time for Mark and, and trying to you know predict it, I had Josh Giddy starting. But like we mentioned with Trey Mann, where you know yesterday it was, we talked about Trey Mann and how the G League could be his best avenue because you're getting used to a new league. You're getting used to a new speed of the game. You're getting used to all these different factors we don't want to change too much about your game so fast. We want to let you get your feet wet and let you get accommodated to the NBA the way that you play the game of basketball, which is with your ball in his hands and as a playmaker and a shot creator for himself, Trey Mann does. And so if we cannot find lineups like that for you in the NBA to let you do that, it might be best to let you play in the G League where you can still do that and still get kind of used to the speed of the NBA game. And maybe for Josh Giddy, even though we just want to see him in the starting group so bad, maybe it's best for his development if he doesn't have to be thrown into the fire of the NBA in a new position all at one time. You know, he's he's been open that he's never played with another guard before, ever. Not to mention a guard like SGA, who's like very good and very talented. So I think that there's a real case to be made for him coming off the bench, but also a case to be made for him starting. So like the, the different avenues that you can go are, are very interesting. Uh, he talked about getting elbowed in the face by Pogoshevsky at practice, and he had like this kind of black eye. <laughs> and he, he knows how much of a, a cult following Pogoshevsky has because he's a very much 18 year old. He's a hyper online. He's making TikToks all the time. He's, he's really transparent online. He's just a kid. And, and so he knows the following Poku has. And so before he told the story of getting elbowed in the face, he said, you guys are going to love this, but I got elbowed in the face by Pokushevsky. And so he knows like we would just run with that and have a good time about that. But he says that, you know, he's a, a guy that spends a ton of money on shoes, which now he's a Nike athlete, but he mentioned how the NBA Academy and his organization, the 66ers in the NBL, they paid for everything. They paid for him to live. They paid for him an apartment, you know, a place to live, wherever it was. They paid for all that. So he had all of his money, all this income. He was on anything he wanted, and the only thing he wanted was shoes. So he bought a ton of shoes. It was a great shoe collection. Josh Giddy, I hope he never changes. And I don't think that he will, but he makes TikToks like every day. And most of them right now are about some girl who's rejecting him. And I'm not sure if he's like telling the truth or not, but he's like, apparently there's this girl that just keeps leaving him undelivered and you know, keeps rejecting him or whatever. And it's very funny stuff. Uh, I hope they never changes. He's given us tours of the Thunder practice facility uh, at one point on his TikToks. I, I hope that he keeps kind of giving those little updates on, on there throughout the season. That's also easier to do if you play well, uh, but still uh, he he's at every TikTok. You're reminded this guy is very young. This guy is like a, 18 year old kid like you or I were at 18. He's just chilling on TikTok. Well, I mean, some of us didn't have TikTok at 18, but nonetheless, uh, it's it's good. It's good. Uh, so that's the the show for today. We're gonna have uh, some more media avails today and tomorrow and Sunday uh, throughout practice this weekend. We're gonna wrap all those up on Monday and then preview the Hornets game on Monday and then to, on Tuesday. We're gonna recap basketball. We're gonna recap a basketball game on Tuesday. How exciting is that? This is Locked On Thunder. Uh, it is every single day. You can get it for your first listen every single morning on Locked on Thunder. Make sure you do that. Subscribe to the show on all your platforms for free, totally free. Thank you for making this your daily listen, your first listen every single day. Now for your second listen, go check out Locked on Fantasy Basketball with Josh Lloyd. He has you up to date on every breakout star and all the advantages you need to win your league in fantasy basketball. I know your drafts are coming up. Get prepared. Locked on Fantasy Basketball with Josh Lloyd. Go check it out right now. Until Monday. Be good and be good to one another. We'll see you on Monday on the Locked on Thunder podcast.